Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 18th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Now, let's start with a quick update on the TPM fail vulnerability that came up last week. There is still some confusion as to what patches are available and where to get them. If your system has an Intel F TPM 2.0 chip, well, there is a BIOS available, update available. Now for the ST TPM chips, you do have a firmware update tool that directly updates the TPM firmware. Intel also released a CSME version detection tool. Now CSME, this is what used to be the management engine ME. It's now called Convergent Security and Management engine and this tool will check your firmware and part of this is also the TPM 2.0 firmware so uh, if you run behind here this tool will alert you and will give you a link to Intel's download page now on that page you still have to find the right update and Heise the German computer magazine actually found that for example the German version of that page doesn't have all the latest update listed that you do find on the English version Dell has also released updates. Now HP did release BIOS updates. HP is actually not using the Intel FTPM 2.0, but instead the other affected TPM version, STTPM. So in general, not easy to figure out which patch you need for what system. Motherboard manufacturers also have their own lists of various updates. Looks like it will take quite a while for everybody to figure out what needs to be patching and where to get the right patch. And if you are having all of a sudden problems with the Microsoft Access database and you're getting an error 3340, well, uh, this is likely due to the November update for Microsoft Office. Quick solution here, remove uh, the security update and that appears to be at this point the only solution that you have to solve this problem. Microsoft is apparently working on a better solution for this bug. And Facebook fixed a stack-based buffer overflow vulnerability in WhatsApp. This vulnerability affected both the Android and the iOS version and could lead to a denial of service or to remote code execution. The vulnerability would be triggered by a crafted MP4 file. As the user is playing back the MP4 file, the vulnerability could then be triggered to execute code. Facebook released an update for WhatsApp Thursday patching this vulnerability. ARM-based devices often implement something called the trusted execution environment. And now Checkpoint took it upon themselves to take a closer look at Qualcomm's implementation of this particular technology, the Qualcomm Secure Execution Environment or QC, which also is sometimes known as Qualcomm's Secure World. Now, what a Checkpoint did here is that they actually fussed against the Qualcomm Secure World operating system and they found a couple of different problems with this particular feature. Over the course of four months, they found four vulnerabilities in the implementation by Samsung, one in Motorola and one in LG. Now, all of these vulnerabilities have been reported to the respective manufacturer. The main effect of these vulnerabilities is that it would be able for an attacker to run code that does read data from these secure execution environments, instead of violating the trust boundaries between these zones. In addition to that, uh, these vulnerabilities could also likely be used uh, to unlock bootloaders and also to root uh, affected devices. And Nextcloud, a self-hosted file sharing and data synchronization tool that sort of tries to do what uh, systems like Dropbox and so do in the public cloud, but self-hosted in your own system, 
is apparently being targeted by ransomware. The ransomware does encrypt files hosted within Nextcloud and well, based on it targeting Nextcloud, it has been named Nextcry so far. Bleeping Computer wrote an article about it and when they looked at it, it hadn't been detected by any antivirus systems so far. Now, I just checked uh, for an update on virus total and now I'm seeing a detection rate of about 7 out of 50 antivirus engines. Still not great, uh, but at least some of the big ones in particular in the Linux world like Clam AV are detecting it now. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.